Well, I am well aware that I say this every single time, but I'm dead excited about this one. Uh, I mean, these, these new models, it's always exciting. New models are always exciting. However, not so much. I am much more of a Xenos fanboy. Um, so it's the new Strike and Scorpions, which are the ones for me. This is the new Kill Team Salvation Box, obviously. So thank you very much to Games Workshop for shipping it over to me. And I can do a lovely little preview for you all with the new models, new Striker Scorpions. You get 10 in the box as well, which is amazing. Uh, you get 10 scouts as well. Uh, I will build the scouts up. They'll be in a different video. Don't worry, I will get to those. However, this one, I am doing the Blades of Cain, uh, the Striker Scorpions. Can't wait to get these done. Uh, I do have a large Drakari army. And I have, what shall we say, supporting Eldar. Um, <laughs> so all my Eldar, for those of you who don't know, are all converted into Dark Eldari. Um, it's a little bit of an idea, just in case I wanted to like combine them and run Yanari or something like that. I wanted to uh, have them looking... I thought it would be cool anyway to have them look kind of similar. And then the more I did it, the more cool it started to look. So if I ever run an Eldar, pure Eldar army, they look like Dark Elder. They just look cool. Anyway, that's 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 the way I'm going to do it. So that's what I'm going to try and do with the uh, Striking Scorpions as well. However, let's have a quick flick through. So this is obviously the build instructions uh, for all the stuff there. Get rid of that. Who needs build instructions? Uh, we have the Striking Scorpions there, so we're going to get the sc Striking Scorpions out. Oh my word. Oh! I do like Kill Team. Kill Team's really cool. So we've got some cards there. I'm guessing they're going to be gang cards. Uh, uh, gang cards. <laughs> I'm getting excited about Necromunda now as well. Um, I'm guessing they're going to be the kill team cards. Uh, we've got the book there as well. And then we uh, there's a third sprue for the striking scorpions. So that's all of those. Bases. And it looks like they are all on... I was going to say it looks like they're all on 32 mils, but they are not. They are 28 and, and, and 32 is there. So the, the scouts will be on 32s and the Striking Scorpions on 28s. Uh, the very, very simple and reduced terrain sprue. And then, oh, we've got another Striking Scorpion sprue. This is cool. Uh, and then here are the Scouts, which we will look at in another video. However, get rid of those. And we're going to have a proper look at these because I'm so excited. Right, okay. So very, very quickly, the plan is for these... I'm going to zoom in here for you like that so that you can see. The plan is here. Uh, I'm going to build some of them up. And uh, when we're going to convert some so they look a little bit more dark Eldar-esque. Uh, the easy one for that, uh, and the one that I think is going, to, uh, is going to be quite funny, is I'm going to put Incubi helmets. The idea is I'm going to swap the helmets over. I'm going to give them Incubi helmets. So you do get... As you can see, you get the Yunari, let's zoom in even more so that you can see even better. You do get the Yunari heads and then the Strike and Scorpion heads, so you can kind of put them in whichever one you like. Now, I have what I've been doing, as you can see here, uh, is putting Dark Eldar helmets. I mean, this was, this was a, just a really simple swap. And I think they look absolutely fantastic. So they have the, the Drakari backpack on. And then a Drakari helmet, a Kabbalite helmet. They look great. Um, you will possibly have seen my Howling Banshees one. So we put the Hellion heads uh, into, kind of sculpted out and, and drilled out the, uh, the hole where the head goes and put Hellion heads on the Howling Banshees. Also gave them some more you know, uh, Drakari blades for certain things. Uh, and then one that... Uh, is, is also just looks super super cool. Uh, we've got a spirit seer here uh, with again it's uh, it's just a Kabbalite helmet. <laughs> That's all it is, and then it's got the the plume from the spirit seer. Uh, and I think I swapped that. I think that's a uh, a Hellion uh, blade on there. Um, or uh, actually, I think it might be the uh, scourge. It's a scourge spear, uh, which looks really really cool. So that's the idea. That's the kind of the look that I go for. I don't think they need any kind of more shifting around. And these, one thing I want to try and do with these is see if I can still get the Mandy Blasters on the helmets. Now, the helmets look like they come in two parts, which is interesting. 
uh, and also it should make it reasonably easy then to get the Mandy Blasters onto the Incubi helmets because they are the Mandy Blasters there. So what I should be able to do, uh, I haven't got an Incubi helmet uh, with me at the moment, uh, but you will see that when I start building. So what uh, the idea will be is just to kind of cut the Incubi helmet and fit it onto that. Should be quite cool. Um, but the new sculpts look stunning. I've said it before, uh, when, the, when Games Workshop are doing these ones at the moment, uh, the, the kind of the re-sculpts, some of them work really well when you just take the old kind of style and the look of the models and just kind of convert them over to, to new sculpts, new, um, new uh, moulding procedures and everything like that, and you get crisp details and, and everything. Um, and then some of them, for instance, if you watch my... Uh, reveal video where I was talking about Immotech the Stormlord I think he could have been pushed a little bit further Striking Scorpions I don't think uh, this, they are perfect as are aren't they they are just absolutely brilliant they don't need any kind of evolution just make them new plastic new kind of clear clarity detail and everything I mean look at the dreadlocks on this it's just going to be cool uh, so here is the claw as well so we've got the claw for the Exarch oh the, I saw <laughs> Ooh, the uh, the the chainsaws look amazing as well compared to the more chunky kind of style that you get on the Space Marines. The lovely slender Eldari Xenos style, a nice and thin, agile looking chainsaws look amazing. I don't think I'm going to swap those at all. The only thing I'm really tempted to do is swap these over for splinter pistols. But if I do that, I really want to cut off that little top. Um, the, the little top kind of laser red dot sight and drop that on a splinter pistol as well um, but I, I'm not even sure it's going to need that either I think it might well just be an incubi head an incubi helmet uh, and get it done uh, they all have they all have the little Eldar wraith bone for the bases should look really really good when we're building them up um, it'd be interesting to see let's get have a look at the the build process. It'll be interesting to see what kind of different poses there are. Uh, da -da. Second half. Yep, there we go. So I don't think any of them are running. So we've got. Just get that one in there. Uh, so we've got a oh, the double-handed chainsaw as well. Twin chainsaws. Oh, it's just so cool. Oh my god, this is going to be so much fun. Um, so I don't think there's any running. I think they're all pretty static poses. Uh, which might be a bit of a disappointment. It would have been nicer to have some running, I think, uh, a bit more dynamic, particularly because they're like the vanguard of the uh, the Eldar army. Yeah, they're all a little bit static. Um, because they're kind of scouty, I think it might have been nice to have them a little more dynamic or maybe a little bit more crouchy, but that's being really picky. It's being really picky. Um, I mean... Jez's original, all of Jez's original Eldar stuff is phenomenal anyway, so I don't think, like I say, they don't really need any any uh, re-sculpts or evolutions or anything, they just just put all the new sculpting technology that they have, that they've been developing over these years. Uh, right, so let's see if I can find, I want to find the, the big two-handed one, oh my word, there it is, look. There it is. Let's zoom back in and have a look. Now, in terms of clipping all of these out, yeah, you can see already, look, you can see already that some of these have got a little bit of stress just from the packing. You've got that little stress line across there. So when you're clipping some of these out, uh, so that little bit there, that bit there, always clip those out first because you don't want to be clipping these larger gates and moving the part and putting stress on those. So um, I would... Uh, try and show you if I can so if I was to clip this part here that's quite a large gate that's quite a large gate so as I clip it it's going to move and put pressure it's going to put pressure here and it's going to like accent accentuate that kind of stress line there so when you're cutting these things out use the very tip of your uh, tip of your um, clippers if you use further down here it's going to be moving the part even further so use the tip of your clippers let's get that in focus again there we go. Just use the clip of the tip of your clippers and just drop that out there, and you see how the part moves, uh, moves a little bit, and therefore it strains on here. But that that's 
got lots of um, it's got lots of connection there. Whereas if I cut it out here and then cut it there, then the stress part the stress will be coming through these parts here. Um, so yeah, cut these, cut all of these kind of dreadlock bits off first. Cut that dreadlock bit off first there. Um, but uh, yeah, look at the state of that. Ah, oh, the the issue with this. The issue with this kit is that I think they're going to have so many cool weapons. I'm not going to have enough models to put them <laughs> to put them all on. Now, one good thing, and I've spoken about this before in in uh, Space Marine videos before. Um, if you watched any of my Space Marine videos from uh, Leviathan launch, one good thing about Tenth Edition is they've kind of combined all the weapon stats and things. So. Units have a very particular and very simple stat line now. The, the obvious one is the Space Marine guns, the bolters. So they're all nice and simple. Uh, they've got one stat line, therefore it doesn't really matter. You can't do a, a non-WYSIWYG layout for that because a Space Marine just has a bolter. Um, so it doesn't really matter. Like So that's why I've done some of my Space Marines are going to have a heavy bolter because they look cool. So I th I'm hoping this is going to be the same for Striking Scorpions. Um, Striking Scorpions themselves only have one layout. They just have a uh, a chain sword, a chain sword and a um, shuriken pistol. However, the Exarch can have a few more different layouts, so loadouts. So he can have the big two-handed chain sword. He can have two chain swords, and then he can have the claw as well. I don't know which one I want to go. However, the other um, the other Striking Scorpions. If I get, I'm tempted. I think I'm going to give him the claw because I think the claw is iconic. Therefore, the other striking scorpions can only have a chainsaw and a, and a um, shuriken pistol. So it doesn't matter in my head if I give one of them two chainsaws, if that makes sense. Because like, he's only got a single stat line, it doesn't matter. Um, so I think that's the way I'm going to try and get some of the other weapons into the unit. Uh, particularly this thing, because that is phenomenal. Um, and then I'll just have to make sure that the Exarch stands out and looks really, really cool. I mean, he will do with that claw as well. Uh, I'm wondering if there's anything I could do to that claw to make it look a little bit more dark Eldar-esque. He's got uh, a, a bit here, uh, a, a contact point there to put the shuriken pistol on. Um, so maybe we can play around with something there. But these just look so, so, so cool. We are going to build them. We are going to get the heads on. Uh, the... I'm absolutely loving the way they are sculpting. Have a look at this. I'm loving the way they are sculpting Eldari heads at the moment. Look at that. Look how angular and angry and fine. Look at the fine detail on that as well. Absolutely. Absolutely brilliant. I'm, I'm, I know they've got like their own special formula of plastic uh, that they've developed. But my God, it's good, isn't it? The detail that they are able to get. There's another one. Look, these are really cool. I, yeah, I love these. I, I would like to use more bear heads on my, on my Eldar if I could. Um, <laughs> so good, so good. I'm very excited for hopefully some more aspect warriors, but also maybe possibly mandrakes. So I think mandrakes might be quite cool. Um, now, uh, there we go. I have, I've got to try and keep the, the background clear. I've had a few of you say that uh, when the background is messy, it's a bit more a bit more difficult to see the parts. I mean, look at the, look at the detail and the... It's just... I mean, I, I go on about this all, all the time, but like the clarity and the crisp details. Look at the... Oh, oh, oh. Very, very excited to get these painted. Now, they are also... So my, my Dark Eldar slash Drakari are... Uh, dark red and turquoise now because striking scorpions are green uh, in the law and everything I'm gonna do these uh, dark turquoise which I think would look really really cool and match sort of match but sort of stand out against the rest of my army so I think that'll be quite cool do it dark turquoise and bone is the plan just brilliant just absolutely brilliant got lots and lots and lots of these little mandy blasters as well which is really interesting so uh, it'd be cool to, to uh, finally get a an incubi helmet and see how an incubi helmet is going to fit onto that it should if we can get this cut like that on an incubi helmet it should just go on quite quite straightforward but 
yeah, it'll be great. Uh, I might see if I can incorporate the dreadlocks as well, but yeah, just wow. Wow, wow, wow. Right, enough, enough just like, <laughs> just splurging about how cool these are. Let's get some of these built. Uh, and uh, then we're going to uh, start converting some for the dark Eldari striking scorpions. <laughs> right, I'll catch you in a sec.
Well, 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 well. Um, yeah, this is rather cool. I'm quite pleased with this. I think that looks amazing. Let me do a let me do a mega zoom in for you so you can see a bit better. Uh, there we go. Um, yeah, I think that looks really really cool. It's ever so simple to do. So the incubi head comes in two halves, so you can remove a little bit more from the back half than the front half. The front half needs that little bit of a step, so it fits underneath the mandy blaster, um, and then the mandy blaster just basically just sits underneath. Um, uh, yeah, it's, it's dead easy. It's very, very easy. There's a bit of a gap there. Uh, I will probably fill that with a little bit of putty. Um, but uh, yeah, very, very easy to do. Just kind of keep taking off tiny, 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 tiny slithers until you do your first one, and then your second one will be dead easy. Uh, but um, yeah, there are... <laughs> that's my... That's my dark Eldari striking scorpions. Um, I think it's quite funny that I've used Incubi helmets for striking scorpions, seeing as uh, Drazar uh, is <laughs> is around. Um, and uh, yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this. I'm going to get this based up, uh, and we're going to put a photo up. Ah, keep dropping the damn thing. There we go. Uh, I'll put a photo up uh, once we've got uh, all the rest of them built. And we can have a chat and have a look and see what they're going to be looking like. Um, tune in for a painting video. God damn the, oh, the detail on these is just so clean. It's so clean. Yeah, fantastic. What do you think? Do you think I was the right? Did the right thing on leaving the shuriken and the chainsaw on i don't think it needs anything else i think the chainsaw i don't i didn't want to i didn't want to remove the chainsaw at all i think the chainsaw was so iconically striking scorpions that that didn't need to go i really wanted to find a way of getting the mandy blasters on now the way that they've done the helmets with the the two halves the mandy blasters at the bottom and then the helmet sticks on top it's absolutely perfect for doing this so absolutely fantastic thank you very much games workshop um and i don't think it needs a i don't think it needs a um splinter pistol uh it's, I, th I think changing that for a splinter pistol would probably be too much hassle for the for the effect sort of thing like th that amount of effort was absolutely fine but changing it to a splinter pistol i don't think it's particularly needed so uh, i'm going to get this based up i'm going to build the rest of them and i'll see you in a second okay so as you can probably tell a little bit of time has passed uh, due to my long hair you can probably tell but uh, we have I have done all of these. They look, excuse my friend, fucking awesome. Um, I like them loads. I think they look fantastic. And they're going to fit right in with my kind of dark Eldar, uh, dark Eldari vibe uh, that I've been doing. So the plan is just to uh, have these as a slightly more interesting Eldar army slash Yanari if I ever want to do Yanari and uh, and uh, Drakari. So including some Drakari in there. Uh, the, this one was the worst one, as you can see, because there's a little bit of putty in there. This is the worst one that I did. I ended up taking far too much. Where's my little pointy stick? I ended up taking off far too much from the uh, the back of the front of the Incubi helmet. So I just had to fill it with a little bit of putty. Um, it's it's the worst one. It's going to look a little bit ugly when it's prime, but like you won't notice when it's on the table, thankfully. Uh, but all the other ones are absolutely fine. But um, yeah, there we go. That's the that's the Exarch. Now I had a little a bit of a a like mental challenge with the exarch i didn't know whether to because i wanted the claw and the the uh, the sword i'm going to do the other one with either the two-handed sword or i'm going to put the two-handed sword on one of these single hand uh, chain swords and just have it like as a as a massive sword uh, but i wanted the claw because i think the claw was iconic so I, I wanted to try and keep the claw in now one thing i wanted to try and consider was putting um one of the racks so one of the racks models has like a, a, a Drakari claw uh, model on it. Uh, in fact, give me a second, I'll go and get the, the model that has it. So this is the this is the claw I was talking about. Uh, this is on my Archon. Um, and that's the that's the claw that comes on one of the it's from one of the racks. And um, the Shadow Fair, Shadow Phoenixes as uh, the Cabalite name is. So I thought I'd try and put a lot of kind of bird-like things on it so this is the talon and I, I was thinking about using this however if you look at it it's much smaller than that claw and i don't think 
I just don't think it would have worked um, as a whole. So I've left I've left this one on. I even thought about using like the thumb and swapping out the thumb on this one for something else, uh, maybe even that one. But um, yeah, ultimately I just I just left it at that. I didn't think it was going to be worth the hassle to try and kind of shift the vibe away from these and. I, th I think I was right. Um, feel free to correct me in the comments down below if you think I could have done something slightly more interesting with a claw to make it a bit more Dracari-esque. Maybe like just snip off that thumb and put a, a blade on there or something or snip off that, this front front claw and put a blade on there. So if you, uh, you left the articulation points on here and just snipped off and replaced the, the actual claw bit with a knife, maybe that would work. The issue I had is that the width of the claw here, if you just put a knife on it, it would look kind of out of place. Anyway, so that's where we got to. There's a nice amount of variety that you can get with the poses. They're really quite easy to kind of pose up uh, and change the uh, poses on them. I've got loads of these little kind of Eldar wraith bone sections um, just kind of moulded up or cast loads of these little bits up um, from various kits just so that I can cover all my like Eldar and Drakari. Uh, with Wraithbone on the bases, just kind of keeps them keeps them um, a little bit of coherency between the whole armies. Uh, but uh, yeah, you can get loads of loads of dynamic kind of difference and variation in the poses. Uh, I do like them. I think they look fantastic. So these ones are going to get painted up. I'm going to the the plan is there is going to be a painting painting video on these. The plan is because my um, here we go because my cabalites are this dark red and dark turquoise. The plan is to make these camo turquoise so I'm going to do like turquoise camo on them um it always made me chuckle that the kind of the camouflage strike and scorpions were bright green I know they've got like camo suits on but so I'm going to do them like a dark turquoise but camo patterned all over them see how that comes out um if you look at the wings on the archon here we've got a little bit of purple coming in the shadows so we can play around with some purple as well so uh, ultimately they're going to be dark camo turquoise and then red as the accent with like bits of, bits of purple in the shadows and everything like that i think they're going to look amazing all the details will be bone as per usual and uh, yeah tune in for that video and uh, yeah i hope you enjoyed watching watching me <laughs> create some dark eldari striking scorpions or, or incubi scorpions or incu scorpions or whatever you want <laughs> whatever you want to call them dark scorpions there we go um, so thank you very much everybody you can find me on twitch make sure you drop me a follow on twitch i'll probably be painting some of these over on twitch because they are really cool and i want to get them done um so it's twitch.tv forward slash chris frossin and also please drop me a follow on instagram as well that's where i post all my kind of updates and you'll find some kind of sneaky little information about uh, things that i'm working on on there that's that and my twitter are just both uh, at chris frossin you can find me everywhere on, under that name. I'm dead easy to find. Right, thank you very much, everybody. Take care, and uh, as always, keep playing hard and enjoy your models any way you like. There we go. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Bye-bye.